Hey, welcome everybody back to the Monday Night Wars. This is the fourth week we're doing it between WWF and WCW. We're reviewing Monday Night Raw, the fourth week for Raw. This took place on October the 2nd, 1995. This was the 129th episode of Raw in its history. It took place on September the 25th, one night after the In Your House event. That's where they taped it. But, it, it view, but the show viewed on October the 2nd. This is the second taped episode from the same venue in the Grand Center in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Like always, I won't make anyone wait for the rating. This week, uh, last week's raw rating was 1.9. Nitro's was 2.7. So Mc, McMahon's company, WWF, lost for the first time last week. However, this week, the October 2nd, 1995 episode that I'm reviewing drew a 2.5. And Nitro, what did it do? It drew a 2.5. So for the first week in the Monday Night Wars, and this is week four, this is week four. The first time they tied. So this is the first draw. Raw, Raw has two victories. Nitro has one. And now there's a draw. So it's 2-1-1 one, and one is the WWF's record against Nitro. So both uh, episodes were a 2.5 on this evening. McMahon and King do commentary. Uh, Raw started with a video package of last week, and just in case people missed it. And then they open with Razor Ramon versus the 123 Kid. The Kid has two victories over Ramon on Raw. It's history. Uh, can he get a third one? That was the question. The 123 Kid was a heel. Ramon was the face. Uh, the Kid got the victories on the May 17th, 1993 episode where it was the big upset. Then he won also September 18th, 1995, the week before this. Two weeks before this TV-wise, but a week before this tapings-wise. Uh, so this is the third meeting they have. Uh, one, two, three, kid cost Ramon the victory in your house versus Dean Douglas. So there's also there's more animosity for this match. Hammerlock takedown by the kid. Razor came back and uh, the kid hit him with high kicks, and then a spinning heel kick. Uh, these two ki the guys were working fast in the beginning start to the match. Ramon right walks into a spinning heel kick and another near fall. Douglas comes to the uh, forefront to take notes. Dean Douglas, he's taking grades while the kid and Razor. Uh, we're wrestling in the ring. The one, two, three kid uh, goes up for a spinning heel kick, but Razor uh, comes back with a clothesline and gets him at 254. It was a good sprint of a match with a weak ending, with just a clothesline by Razor Ramon. But uh, he get he gets a much weeded win versus the one, two, three kid because of the two losses he has. Uh, so soon with the interference, uh, but all of a sudden the match. Uh, the, the match kept going, even though it had already ended. They kept wrestling again. And uh, well, they, Ramon took the 1-2-3 kid down on the mat. The 1-2-3 kid came back with a slap. Uh, it's not over. And McMahon says, what do we, do? What do we have here? Uh, this is the third match in a row for them to go at it as Razor uh, pinned him for another inside cradle. I don't know why the ref's making the pin. The match was already over. But the, this is the third match they're having in a row already so they have three matches this is the third match they're having in totality in raw's history but they're having three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back matches in a row here and the referee was counting the pinfalls attempts usually they're just beat up each other up after the match but this is like pinfall attempts and ramon kept beating the one two three kid in the ring to show him that he could beat him three times get it one two three so he beat him three times in a row uh, he goes for a handshake after that, and the one two three kid shakes hands, and McMahon says they resolve their differences. Well, good, because that was confusing. So two stars for the first match. Uh, they preview in your house to the Great White North with Bulldog challenging Diesel for the title. Goldust makes his debut in the ring against Marty Jannetty. King Mabel faces The Undertaker, and so on. Next up, they got Hunter Hearst Helmsley versus Barry Horowitz. Helmsley's still undefeated in the WWF. They show Skip being beaten by Barry Horowitz at SummerSlam, showing that Barry Horowitz can actually win a match. He's the ultimate underdog. Uh, Vince had a pull at the time, and he asks, would O.J. Simpson be found guilty tomorrow? This was the day before the verdict, and he actually had people uh, voting on the WWF Superstar line, but half of the proceeds go to some charity. So it's not just McMahon cashing in on O.J. Simpson. Uh, <laughs> if, But I wouldn't have been surprised if he did. Hunter Helmsley with an armbar takedown. Hunter Helmsley a little heel by heel to the face of Horowitz. A heel from heel. Hunter Helmsley had never lost in a standing switch and a reversal by the waist lock. Barry rides Helmsley who uses the rope to break free. McMahon mentions that Raw had its highest rating ever last week. He means the week before. He probably got confused because it was at the 
the two tapings in the same venue. He's talking about the Raw that drew a 2.7 two weeks ago. Last week, it was a 1.9. This week, they're doing it's a 2.5, but obviously, he didn't know that as of yet. He was talking about the week before, but he meant the week before that. Uh, Barry Horowitz pinning Hardhurst Helmsley on the mat with a backslide, a kick out by Barry uh, by Helmsley. And after being beaten down, then Barry hits an elbow and McMahon flips out as as does the crowd. A Thez pressed by Barry, an abdominal stretch into a roll up, but Helmsley kicks out. A stiff European uppercut twice by Helmsley, and then he got a pedigree at 5:35 for the victory for Helmsley. So good little match here. I rated it two stars and three quarters. Uh, next up, there's a tag team: J.C. Ice and Wolfie D. They were the USWA champions. That's Lawler's territory. Uh, they're called PG-13, the tag team. So J.C. Ice and Wolfie D are called PG-13. They take on the Jobbers, Al Brown and Sonny Rogers. That's not their tag team name, the Jobbers. I'm just saying they're a Jobber tag team. Al Brown and Sonny Rogers going up against PG-13. I, I don't remember PG-13. To be honest, this might be one of their only appearances on Raw. Maybe they appeared one or two more times, but we'll have to see. I can't remember them, though. Um... I, but Lawler spends most of the match explaining to McMahon uh, who they are since he's in their ter- since this tag team is borrowed from Lawler's territory, the USWA. They're the t- USWA tag team champions, and Lawler keeps explaining what they are and what, who they are and what they do. And McMahon just goes, "I see," <laughs> on the commentary. Um, he always uses "What a maneuver!" and "I see." And uh, anyways. They're they're kind of like the headbangers mixed with too cool uh, before both of the teams existed. Anyways, what PG thirteen takes it to to Al Brown and Sonny Rogers. They get the victory at three forty four. Basic tag match to try to get over one team. I rated it a star and a half. They say Michaels, Diesel, and Taker will take on Yoko Bulldog and Owen in a six man tag next week. That should be an interesting six man tag. The main event is Britt Hart versus Jean Pierre Lafitte. They had a classic it in your house. This is a rematch. Lafitte corners the hitman and he slugged it out with him in the corner. Uh, an elbow and then a sleeper to Brett. Hart elbows out and runs into a reverse elbow by Lafitte. Lafitte. Hart reversed him to the corner with a hard Irish wit. Uh, and then Brett power slammed him right on the steel steps. That was a sick spot. Brett steel, uh, slams Jean Pierre Lafitte on the steel steps and McMahon goes, What a devastating maneuver! Hart throws him back inside the ring, and that was quite the slam. Uh, a slingshot to the ropes. Lafitte hit a hot shot to Brett. Then he does the Brett pose like this with his arms. Lafitte wears down Brett with a sleeper again and uh, hits moves like a devastating clothesline, flying forearm. Uh, the hitman kicks out of all that. The hitman's down but keeps kicking out. Jean-Pierre Lafitte reversed him into the corner. Huge splash from Bret Hart. Near falls in this match. A lot of near falls. The fans chatting, let's go, Bret. Suplexes galore. A cannonball by Lafitte to Bret, but he kicks out. Uh, Bret is reverse Irish whipped into the steel steps as King is euphoric. Jean-Pierre Lafitte with a suplex to Bret, but he lands on his feet and hits an atomic drop. Then he hits his middle rope elbow, his signature moves. Then he goes for the sharpshooter and... uh, Lafitte taps out at 13 minutes exactly. So Lawler was happy when Lafitte was in control, but Brett wins and then punches out Lawler after for good measure. So a four-star classic. I rated their pay-per-view encounter, and I give this four stars as well. It really was an excellent match. Isaac Yankum came out after and attacked Brett. He's the king's dentist, remember. And McMahon says there'll be a cage match between the two in the future. Cam Cornette cut a promo on the faces, and the and Sean, Taker, and Diesel are the faces, and then they cut a promo on Cam Cornette to end the show. Now it's time to rate Raw at a 10. Last week it was a 6.5 despite the bad loss in the ratings when they drew a 1.9. Uh, this week I'm giving it a 7 out of 10, mainly for the classic main event, which also takes a lot, uh, goes into a account for when, when you're grading a show, the main event. But the undercard with Helmsley and Barry Horowitz, uh, said enough uh, for me to give it a 7 out of 10. Again, we're grading this just for w- what they could do with the talent they have for an hour, uh, for a one hour time span. So again, thanks to everyone watching along. I hope everyone is enjoying the reviews. If not, going back, you, these reviews will always be there. So whenever you want to re- rewatch the Monday Night Wars, check these reviews out and see if your opinion matches mine. I'll keep telling you the ratings reports and I'll keep staying up to date with it. For this week's Raw Review, I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.